Hello. So about nine months ago, I had an interview with a lovely young woman who has a very popular podcast. I'm going to keep her platform private for now, just in case she releases this interview someday. But as of now, I'm concerned she won't ever release it, which is really a shame because it was so fun and so great to talk to her. She is philosophically completely different from me. She seems to be very far left based on her popular Instagram account, her posts. So although she and I don't agree on much, she was incredibly kind and sweet and open-minded and it was really easy to talk to her. I didn't feel judged once and I didn't judge her once and I was really excited for the conversation to go live. But again, it's been about nine months since we did the interview and she said it would be released in a few weeks after we completed it so as of right now it seems to have been shelved so instead i thought i would share my answers to her questions for your viewing pleasure here although i'm going to keep the most controversial answers on my patreon exclusively but i hope you like the video anyways let's get started so her first question was who are you and what is your youtube channel about so i am jasmine theodora and i have a youtube channel wherein i discuss femininity womanhood and what i call lost female education i am passionate about inspiring women to live in alignment with their intentionally created nature to live their best lives as the popular saying goes uh, to live as joyfully peacefully and meaningfully as we possibly can i am of course still endeavoring towards that trying to live as joyfully peacefully meaningfully as i can i'm not saying that i have, I have it figured out but i just share basically what has worked for me in my in my endeavor and it apparently uh, very very thankfully has resonated with many women so I'm trying to continue on with that. <laughs> what is traditional femininity to you? So to put it simply, I define femininity as a woman embracing and confidently operating in her innate nature and divinely given abilities. It is rooted in who God intentionally created women to be through biological makeup and inward spirit. Conceptually, it encompasses the contrasting traits that differentiate women from men, the traits that make us women uniquely strong and powerful. Powerful meaning the ability to enact positive change, not powerful, you know, as in tyrannical or, or, or brutal. I would include being, flowing, yielding, softness, meekness, gentleness, amenability, tenderness, flexibility, cooperation, and positivity, to name a few, or I guess that's more than a few. Some people may think that the concept of femininity is restrictive and myopic, but I do want to emphasize that each woman does have her own unique feminine essence and her own unique expression of her feminine traits. And embracing femininity does not at all inherently mean that you are erasing who you are. It's quite the opposite. It's rather coming into yourself. It's rediscovering who you are. And it's actually incredibly liberating because boundaries are essential to freedom. There's a fantastic book titled Even Exile that goes into depth about that, although that very well may sound ridiculous. But freedom lies in the ability to pursue excellence, and that opportunity is dependent on boundaries that define and therefore restrict that endeavor. There's a fantastic quote from J.K. Chesterton which brilliantly describes that concept. It goes, art is limitation. The essence of every picture is the frame. If you draw a giraffe, you must draw him with a long neck. If in your bold, creative way, you hold yourself free to draw a giraffe with a short neck, you really find that you are not free to draw a giraffe. And you know, as of now, we're part of a world that's really at odds with restrictions. More and more people are often offended by any concept of boundaries. People want to reject labels, definitions, and what they call antiquated ethics because people want to be liberated from all constraints, including the constraints given to us by nature itself. But I would say, how can we possibly pursue excellence as a man or woman if there are no restriction, restrictions on what it even means to be a man or woman or on what it means to be masculine or feminine? How can you perform well in basketball Without the boundary lines, how can you perform well in chess if you try to play outside of the confines of the chessboard? If there are no boundaries to, to anything, then everything devolves into chaos and everything becomes uglier, which is why modern art, as compared to the art of the Renaissance, for instance, is incomparable and why modern people aren't considered as attractive as past generations. This is because 
There cannot be excellence and beauty alongside degeneracy if the illusion, illusion of degeneracy being good is to be maintained. If any choice can be good, then goodness is reduced to the lowest common denominator because the illusion that ugliness and depravity is good or beautiful cannot be maintained if beauty and excellence still exists. No one is going to be fooled into believing that what is ugly is beautiful if what is truly beautiful still exists. So you must destroy what is beautiful to properly fool people into buying into the ugly thing. So that is why I believe it's such a thing as traditional femininity, femininity with boundaries. Of course, any sane person wouldn't say that just anything can be good and the same principle applies to femininity. There must be some confines. I understand that many people are a little taken aback by the idea of traditional femininity because they don't want to go back to a time where women were deemed too delicate for hard work although that was mostly among the, the bourgeoisie or you know something silly like that and i completely understand the reluctance due to that concern but that's you know that's why it's actually exciting to live in this era where the, there are no boundaries anymore because that means we have the opportunity to start from the drawing board and move forward with the knowledge of any past mistakes so that we can aptly redraw the boundaries now. I do believe that women should integrate traits that are considered, you know, more masculine to their character for their own well-being, you know, such as, you know, assertion and discernment. But of course, if you're female, it makes complete sense for your essence to be feminine and to feel more at home, aligned and at peace when you're embracing femininity. When did you set up your account and why do you want to talk about your perspective online? So if anyone out there reads Jordan Peterson, they'll recognize the quote, opportunity lurks where responsibility has been abdicated. You know, and in this postmodern, you know, society or world, I don't think women are taught about the beauty of being women anymore or very often or very well. Girls are not, are not taught how to grow up to be women. Boys are not taught how to grow up to be men. Girls and boys are simply taught how to grow up very loosely. I mean, I know I unfortunately wasn't really taught with my, with my womanhood in mind or with my sex in mind. And that has left women with an internal misalignment with identity crisis even. I think if you tell a woman that her being a woman has nothing to do with how she should navigate life, then you're setting her up for failure. So my little corner of the internet is devoted to helping women escape that lie, essentially. In your bio, you say recovering the art of femininity and lost female education. Can you tell me what lost female education is? Well, I believe that there has been a deficiency, again, in the education and understanding of traditional feminine qualities and roles and values. There's been a deficiency in spreading awareness of issues that directly concern women. Women are no longer really taught about topics such as feminine sexuality, how to keep a home, how to serve your family, how to attract a good man, what even makes a man a good man, how to, how to keep track of your cycle, how to how to avoid pregnancy naturally, how to become pregnant naturally, just broadly how to live in alignment with who you were created to be. And I want to try to close that gap in any way I can, God willing. Some of your videos look at feminine traits and masculine traits, and in particular, how these can be used to attract the opposite sex. Can you give me an example of attractive feminine traits? I would say the most fundamental attractive feminine trait that precedes all else is a woman's deep and earnest love of being a woman. I hear so often women who say they hate being a woman and how they wish they had been born a man and it's so be much better to be a man and it's so unfortunate to hear that because it's truly wonderful to be a woman and if a woman truly embraces what makes her a woman that will radiate through her and it'll positively affect all of the things she does she'll move more slowly gracefully and intentionally she'll speak more softly she'll you know love more tenderly and if you try to be more feminine but you lack a, a sincere love for being a woman, then I think your efforts would be deficient and artificial. So I'd say first and foremost, before trying to be, you know, before trying to embody attractive feminine traits such as, you know, being demure or feminine mystery or playfulness, first try to understand why you dislike being a woman if you do get to the root cause. Perhaps you don't feel safe, perhaps you haven't felt safe for a long time which makes you scared to be more tender and soft and thus it makes you resent the innate parts of you that pull you towards that more soft state. 
but you have the power to change that. You have the power to impact your life and make yourself feel safe again, to surround yourself with people who make you feel safe and cherished. My apologies for digressing, but yeah, I'd say the most fundamental attractive feminine trait is a deep love for your existence as a woman, and that love is inevitably going to radiate your unique feminine essence. What do you think of the term trad wife? So I have a bit of a nuanced take on it. I think the popularity of the term has been positive because it has really exposed young women, especially to the beauty of femininity and, you know, traditional womanhood. But I also think it may have its genesis in the sexualization of traditional women because I suspect that the term was, you know, made up in the tradcon red pill online sphere, which is often a perversion of traditional living. So while I may use that term sometimes because people are so familiar with it, I do use it with a grain of salt. I think most Christian women would instead just call themselves you know, a Christian, a Christian wife if they are, a Christian mother if they are. And while that may be a bit more of a mouthful, not roll off the tongue as easily as Chad wife, I think it's more apt and it also, it also kind of implies that the woman is not chronically online. <laughs> not that you are if you do use that term, but I just think it's, it is almost exclusively used online. I've never heard a woman in real life refer to herself as Chad wife. You are Orthodox Christian. How intertwined is your faith with your views on gender and femininity? So it is, um, my apologies for starting so many answers with so. It is completely intertwined. My belief in God completely informs all of my views down to things as basic as anthropology. My understanding of the genesis of humanity, what humanity's problems really are, you know, sin, the passions, etc., and what the remedy is, Jesus Christ, the word, the church, to be baptized and to repent. If my Christian beliefs inform generic anthropology, then it's naturally going to inform my views on womanhood and gender more narrowly. Scripture and tradition also clearly outline what is godly in a woman and what is not godly. Your Rebecca's and your Jezebel's. Scripture tells women to be meek, to be quiet, to, be, to submit to their husbands, to not be leaders in the church, to be busy at home, to be pure, to serve their families. And of course, there's Mary, the mother of God, who is the most revered creature, creature meaning a created person in all of creation to Orthodox Christians. We revere her, revere her so deeply through her, God became incarnate and thus humanity was able to be redeemed. That is, of course, going to lead us to revere womanhood and motherhood so deeply, but also correctly or aptly, I hope that doesn't sound pompous, we don't believe that women are goddesses or believe in divine femininity. I made a video actually about that a while ago. Often, the women who subscribe to the concept of divine femininity believe in free love and sexual liberation, believe in hyper-independence, believe that we don't need men believing in being loud and that women can basically do no wrong. And that is pretty oppositional to what I believe in as an Orthodox Christian. If I had an atheist lens of the world like I used to, I'd believe that nothing exists for any reason, let alone any good reason. That women are who we are through a random, repetitive, arbitrary process through evolution. And thus, why would I want to embrace my innate nature if my nature was not intentionally designed, if it does not come from a mind? You know, Darwin, I believe, actually said something, something similar to that. He said something along the lines of, how could I trust in my faculties of reason if I come from a chimp? How could I trust in my own mind? How could I even come to the conclusion that there is no God if my mind was not designed to think? I think that's one of, the, one of the first things that made me rethink my atheism a while ago. So yes, my beliefs about everything, including gender and femininity, are deeply connected to my faith in Jesus Christ as the one true God and in, in, in his original church, the Orthodox Church, where the correct interpretation of Holy Scripture and canon is preserved. I know you used to be an atheist and then you converted to Christianity. Have your views on gender changed also? Was there a time in which you thought differently about traditional femininity and gender roles? While I was effectively an atheist, I personally didn't think very much about gender roles and gender in general. I knew men and women were different, but I just didn't put much thought into femininity and masculinity as concepts. And I was very supportive of things like genderless bathrooms. I think if you were to tell me that women should be feminine and men should be masculine, I'd give you a very shallow statement about the uselessness of labels and how people should just be who they want to be. And I think it would have just been a myopic statement like that. 
as I hadn't put much thought into the, the idea at all. I do believe in the freedom of being who you want to be, of course. I don't believe in in pressuring anyone or guilting anyone into believing what I believe, but I also do believe in principle that women and men should follow God and and follow what God has laid out for us in terms of ethics and virtue, etc. There's a difference between, you know, being for something in principle and trying to force people to follow that principle. People sometimes comment on my channel, let people do what they want to do, and I'm I always think I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm just a girl with a camera, you know, just talking about things I want to talk about. I think I think oftentimes if you feel perhaps threatened just by someone talking about something, about their own values and their own beliefs, then perhaps your grounding in your own beliefs are not that stable. Perhaps you actually don't you don't have a good grip on what you actually believe and threats beget defensiveness, right? And you only really feel threatened by someone saying something, just simply saying something, if you are insecure, ultimately, in what you do actually believe. And I, I experience this a lot, you know, I experience, I experience just feeling threatened by words sometimes, and that is because I don't have really a good grip yet. I'm not quite secure yet in what I do theoretically believe. Yeah, I would say in general to people who are easily offended by simply people saying something to discern exactly why that is, discern exactly why words affect you so deeply, discern whether, you know, it's this person actually being rude, is this person actually being being rude and is this person actually being cruel in their in their phraseology? Or are you simply not secure in your own beliefs? This person saying something actually just rocks your your world because you fear there might, there might be truth in it. Hope that makes sense. I know you studied psychology, I did sociology at uni, and something we looked at is the idea of nature versus nurture and gender. Do you think you lean more towards nature where women and men are born with differences built into them biologically? I think that femininity is both innate and cultivated, kind of like humanity itself, I think all people, regardless of religious affiliation or lack thereof, would agree that all humans are innately humane, but we all need to work on becoming more humane too. More generous, more patient, more kind. I think that principle applies to femininity and masculinity as well. I think women are feminine through both biological makeup and inward spirit, and then that intrinsic reality manifests itself into our extrinsic realities as well in regards to our desires, our behaviors, our needs, our perceptions even. That's why I think when a woman tries to embrace masculinity instead of femininity, she's making a mistake because she's out of alignment with her internal immutable nature. And I think everyone would agree that sexual dimorphism exists in humanity, even if you just look at the physical differences between men and women, they are rather significant and definitely relevant. You can determine whether someone is a woman or a man with a cursory glance. That is, you know, also intentional. For instance, if I want to exercise in the women's only part of my gym, I just have to take a quick scan of who's in the room to determine if there are only women around and then I will feel safe enough to engage in certain exercises, you know? And those differences don't just stop at the physical. Why would our differences just stop there? Why would women and men simply look different? Why wouldn't they also have natural behavioral differences too? If you give someone two sets of adjectives and the first set of adjectives consisted of dreamy, cooperative, sensitive, sentimental, beautiful, dependent, fearful, sensitive, and gentle, and the second set of adjectives consisted of anchored, dominant, adventurous, risk-taking, stoic, competitive, direct, independent, aggressive, and stern, the likelihood of someone from any given culture or society saying that the first set of adjectives describe women and the second set of, of adjectives describe men would be very, very high, especially in agrarian cultures in which gender roles are more necessary because people live in tight-knit communities and depend on each other instead of depending on anonymous companies and corporations for essentials like food, water, clothes, etc. Even if you just take one organic variable, testosterone for instance, men have much more testosterone of course, and because our hormones in many ways make up who we are, 
that hormonal difference is going to manifest in different levels of aggression and dominance between men and women. And again, that's just one variable. There are several other variables that make up the differences between men and women. Women are the ones who get pregnant and give birth, and so that's going to make for huge differences too. And these differences are beautiful, and the embracement of the respective differences make for harmony. Christians in particular do not believe that we are born as a blank slate, as John Locke put it, or Tabula Rasa. We believe through God's design that we're born with innate strengths that correspond to our sex. We believe God made man and woman two different sexes for a reason and we aim to operate within that framework that God has given to us. And even in a song, harmony is more pleasing than everyone singing the same melody line, you know? I always like to put it that way. It's kind of funny, a lot of women who perhaps have very different values from me would actually agree that us women are quite similar to each other. The I'm just a girl meme comes to mind, the cringe I'm not like other girls trope comes to mind. There's almost always a natural camaraderie that comes with interacting with other women. We are really quite similar to each other and I think that's also beautiful. I think the overemphasis on individualism that we experience in this postmodern era makes us forget that we are really not all that unique. We're not just all born completely as blank slates and then are completely informed by our environment. Women and men usually have a decently predictable set of habits and desires and behaviors regardless of what country or culture they come from. It's just all become too politicized. When you meet other women and tell them about your lifestyle, what's their response like? Is it mostly positive and open-minded or is there judgment? Honestly, I don't get out all that much with a, with a toddler and when I do I don't go much into depth about my life it's usually very surface level stuff that I divulge probably because I loathe drama and don't want to open up a can of worms upon first meeting someone I prefer to ease them into what I believe in since it's usually pretty countercultural so yeah I don't really experience much judgment if at all I don't actually think I ever have in real life it's it's all online. All the judgment is online. <laughs> Something I have found interesting in my research is that women who talk about traditional femininity or choosing to be a wife and homemaker is that the majority of them are white. Is this something you've noticed too? Why do you think that is? Well, I think that the majority of women in places like the US and the UK at least are white. So that of course has to do a lot with the perception. I also think that unfortunately many black women in the US are raised in fatherless homes which is going to impact the interest and trust in men they have which is going to reduce the likelihood that they feel safe enough to embrace femininity and become stay-at-home wives and homemakers being financially dependent on a man. I can't say which mu with much certainty how much that impacts black women's involvement in the traditional lifestyle, but I'll also say that there are many black women who are coming into this lifestyle. So many black women are tired of the old stereotype of being angry, sassy, hard, and independent. You know, they want to, or if I may be so bold, we want to break from that lifestyle. I'm, you know, I'm mixed if anyone is listening. Anyways. Many black women, as much as any white woman, want to embrace their femininity and let their man lead, let, let him take care of most of the bills, if not all of them. We want to bake bread and cook every day and serve our family and stay at home with our babies and pursue hobbies, interests, and passions, and perhaps work in a way that is compatible with the prioritization of being a present steward of her home. I'd also say that the majority of Hispanic women, Air women, African women, Asian women, Pacific Islander women, etc, etc, are quite traditional. The funny thing is that being woke and progressive is actually quite a white thing. So you may see so many white women specifically swing against that woke current because they lived it, they were a part of it and got tired of it and are now passionate about helping to inspire other women to step away from it too. What would you like people to know about your lifestyle? Are there misconceptions you'd like to debunk? Firstly, I'd like to debunk the notion that believing in traditional femininity, homemaking, being a trad wife, <laughs> has anything to do with white supremacy. And I'd like to clarify that I do not have internalized racism. Many people have this false notion that having these beliefs make you racist because these beliefs are more popular amongst conservatives. And many people think that all conservatives are racist. 
I'm not sure why they believe that. I mean, sure, there are people who believe in patriotism and the Second Amendment who are very racist, absolutely. I've, I've encountered some of those people online, but the vast majority of these people are not racist in the slightest. I say that with the utmost sincerity, and that includes me as well. I'd also like to clarify that being of this mindset does not make me hateful. I am not a hateful person. In fact, I covet everyone's validation. I'm really a recovering people pleaser. I don't hate you if you disagree with me. I don't hate you whatsoever. If you live a completely opposite life from me, I'd really be more than happy to be friends with people who are who live very different, who live very differently from me, as long as they are respectful and friendly. Talking with me or any woman with the same values as me would not be a tireless campaign of me or her condemning you and calling you a sinner or anything like that. Christian women and traditional people are as multi-dimensional as anyone else. So not hateful at all. I really enjoy getting along with people and talking about anything and everything. All right, those were all of the questions that she had for me. I hope that you enjoyed this interview, this kind of meta interview of me interviewing myself kind of. I really, really hope that the interview goes live one day on her platform. If it does not, then I am glad to have answer these questions here please let me know what you think in the comment section like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more videos like this from me and hopefully i will see you in the comment section and in the next video or instagram <laughs> bye